Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Red Gaming Theatre Comp video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news which, as usual, popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to start things out with Arcturus, which an AMD employee has confirmed will be the name of the future GPU architecture from the company. So just to catch everyone up, currently we have Polaris, which was the RX 400 and 500 series, along with Vega. Vega was a bit confusing because Vega is not only the code name for the GPU architecture, but it was also the retail name as well. So for example, we've got the Vega 56 and the 64s. And of course you have integrated Vega graphics with not only Intel CPUs, but also AMD APUs as well. Apparently AMD wished to change that. A user on the Foronex forums who is an AMD employee has confirmed that AMD are planning to go back to their older naming schemes where a code name is just a code name and the actual retail name will be something different. So one thing that does remain consistent though is that this GPU code name will be based upon a star, Vega, Navi and now Arcturus follow this same convention. In the case of Arcturus, it is a red giant star, which is the brightest in the constellation of, I believe it's pronounced the booties. So that's kind of cool. Uh, AMD are definitely remaining consistent in that. So what do we know about this GPU? Well, it is currently rather hidden in terms of what we know. All they are listing is that it is next generation and is most likely not going to be available to anyone until 2020. It is, however, confirmed to be 7nm+. plus. So, of course, Vega is currently available in 14nm, although 7nm is going to start becoming available to HEDT consumers, so that would be like data and server farms and that type of thing, but 7nm Vega is not going to be available for gamers. Instead, that is going to be taken care of by Navi, which will be the successor to both Polaris and Vega. There are also some rumours that we've covered previous that we might also see a Polaris refresh, which we can presumably say would be the RX 600 series, but that will not be, at least according to the rumours, a 7nm refresh. It would instead be just 12nm, so essentially the same process used on Zen+. Plus. Whether AMD will do that or not, well, only time can tell. The only reason to think that AMD might do this is that NVIDIA currently have no new GPUs available in the 20 series when it comes to the mid-range market. So the 1060 will remain the only GPU NVIDIA have in that segment until next year. So we can presume that if AMD did release the 600 series within the next month or two, it's possible at least they would have several months or whatever uh, to sell those GPUs, assuming they're a decent uh, performance advantage compared to the 500 series and maybe get a few sales before uh, NVIDIA can counter but it would be a relatively short period so whether AMD will do that or just say you know what we're just going to keep what we've got price reduce as much as possible for the 4 and 500 series and by the way another small tip but for those interested in a relatively cheap upgrade, you can actually pick up the RX 400 and 500 series now really cheap. And I don't just mean new either. Uh, websites like eBay are currently rife with those cards, although they will, of course, have most likely been used for mining. So that is something that you need to take into consideration and whether you're willing to go that route. But I'm just throwing that in there because you can get some really good bargains right now. So, you know, if you're willing to go that route for a couple of months, it is a nice upgrade in the short term. But getting back to Navi and Arcturus then, in regards to Navi, um, information is a little more prevalent. We know that it's scalable. And we also know that it has next generation of memory. So that, of course, means either GDDR6 or HBM3, unless there's some other memory technology that we're just not familiar with that a company is working on and that not has been made available to public knowledge. So that would almost certainly mean that those cards are going to be much faster than what we've currently got, although there are those rumors from Forbes and a couple of other websites Scalable is pretty obvious to the AMD are adopting the Zen-like philosophy here. So in other words, GPUs uh, cores could almost be thought of as Lego blocks and you would simply piece them together to create 
the uh, GPU solution that you're looking for. So much like how Zen is created out of CCXs, uh, AMD would use Infinity Fabric to be able to put together GPU blocks and it would be a lot cheaper for them to produce a custom solution. This is something that AMD have boasted about before. In terms of performance metrics with Navi, that's where things get a little trickier. Uh, if you believe the Forbes article that was doing the rounds a couple of months ago, Navi was essentially created for the PlayStation 5. That doesn't necessarily preclude high performance parts, but other rumors do peg the GPU to be faster than Vega, but not by a substantial margin. However, it will be cheaper. So let's say around the 300, 250, 300 US dollars for a card, which is, I don't know the performance metrics. No one said, they've just said it's going to be a little faster than Vega. So let's say 20% faster than Vega 64 for around 250 US dollars. I can imagine a lot of folks would be interested in that level of performance because it would certainly be very capable of 1440p gaming and most likely 4K as well for the majority of users. In regards to Arcturus, well, this is where things get a little interesting. I have actually covered this in a full video before. I'll try to remember to link it in the video description. If not, you can search on the channel for Super SimD. But the long and short of it is that there are uh, filings, patents from AMD referring to a new architecture, which is the successor to GCN. GCN has been around for some time now. It started in the Radeon 7000 series and then, of course, migrated in various versions. And now, uh, of course, we've got the uh, version which we're seeing in Vega. But this is supposedly going to be a little different. It's going to be a combination of the VLIW, which was the very long instruction word, which we saw prior to that. And now the modern SIMD, which is single instruction multi data that we're seeing with GCN. So why are AMD doing that? Well, it in theory at least would provide a combination of the best of both worlds. VLIW is really good for graphics work, not so great for compute work. And the reverse is true for super SIMD. So in theory, you would have two pipelines, which would almost be parallel in execution. I'm going over the very brief synopsis here, because once again, I did do a full analysis of it which you're welcome to check out once again linked in the video description. But it's going to be very interesting to see which of those GPUs is which, whether we're going to see Navi with this Super 70 design or whether it's going to be Arcturus or not. I also want to put out a small update to a story that I covered yesterday regarding Sony and Crossplay. No, they're not removing it, but this story actually involves Fallout 76. You might recall that one of the leading uh, forces of pressure on Sony were actually Bethesda. Not only, of course, were us consumers instrumental in actually putting pressure on Sony. After all, we are the ones responsible for buying the hardware, buying the games and supporting the company. But also games developers and publishers have an awful lot of sway as well. Companies like Epic Games and Fortnite and Bethesda putting pressure on Sony and saying, hey, we want this is something that Sony need to worry about. After all, not only do they need to worry about developers putting emphasis on their platform, particularly with the new PlayStation coming out, but also it's just a good look because if uh, developers and publishers keep saying, hey, we can do this, but it's Sony's fault. Look over there. Don't blame us. We can't do anything. It's ultimately their responsibility as the platform holder. Therefore, a lot of folks were expecting Fallout 76 cross-platform play on that. Well, no, at least not yet. Peter Hines of Bethesda has confirmed that there is a beta coming, but right now at least cross-platform play is not on their uh, itinerary. Instead, they have other focuses such as, well, making sure the game works. That isn't to say that they will never include it. It could be released either post-launch in an update or perhaps an expansion or whatever, but at least for now it will not happen, which I'm sure will be disappointing for some, but it is what it is. And I also have another update to a story I covered a few days ago as well, and this concerns GPU prices. You might recall that we covered a story that the tariffs that the US government are placing on Chinese goods will naturally increase the prices of GPUs as well. How much? Well, around 10%, as you would probably expect. Now, there is some good news and there's some bad news. If the manufacturer or the AIB, to be more accurate, such as, let's say, MSI or Gigabyte, 
have the ability to produce their GPUs outside of China. Most IIBs currently do assemble the parts inside of China, but companies like Gigabyte or MSI have headquarters inside of Taiwan. So if they simply shifted their manufacturing there, it does of course circumvent the tariffs. The website WCCF Tech claimed to have industry inside information to tell us exactly how much those carts would cost. Now, honestly, it's possible that they could simply guess, uh, given the information. After all, it doesn't take too much to tell you, hey, these companies, you can just do a quick Google search on where a company is based, and then simply add in the cost and then kind of figure out what retailers would have to charge. But there is actually another source of information now that has emerged. And this comes to us through CNBC. Of course, link is in the video description. Shrout Research has claimed, and I quote, PC gamers will likely see increased prices on graphics card when the implementation of this tariff, an unfortunate side effect of the continued policies of the Trump administration. This is unfortunate timing for Nvidia, as it already was under pressure for the prices of the new RTX product family, and it is unlikely that it or its partners will simply absorb the added cost of this tariff. AMD, meanwhile, actually responded to this and have said, we are working closely with our customers and partners to mitigate potential impacts related to the tariffs on AMD-based products. From all we know today, we do not expect the UF tariffs to have a material impact on our business. Nvidia responded and have said, there's relatively little direct impact on us. We understand that most of our partners have moved or are moving to impacted assembly work to Taiwan or Mexico, which are unaffected by the tariffs. So with any luck, this will be something that doesn't actually directly impact the US. And if you're thinking, well, I'm outside of the United States, how does that affect me? Unfortunately, no one really knows. It's possible that certain retailers who will remain nameless but have a tendency to hike prices might just say, oh look, well the US has increased their prices 10%, so we can do similar if you're in the UK or you're in Canada or you're in whatever country. So with any luck, it doesn't increase the global prices of GPUs. After all, we have just started to recover from the whole mining thing. Yes, let's just hope mining doesn't make a comeback with those increased tariffs because that would really be unpleasant. But with all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. It's a bit of a shorter one today uh, because, well, there's some good news. We've actually received our RTX 2080 Ti, so that's going to be benchmark. Hopefully we have some stuff up today. As many of you know, I'm in the United States, so Amy's going to be doing the benchmark. It's going to be a whole thing, basically sending information backwards and forwards, but it's going to happen. So over the next couple of days, we're going to have our RTX 2080 Ti results. Uh, I'm also going to be starting to review uh, AIB partners cards over the next couple of days, plus some other bits and pieces as well. So hopefully you do enjoy that coverage. As I said, there will be not just the normal range of testing as in performance, but over the next couple of weeks, there will be a lot of different testing that we're going to be putting out. So do stick with us for that. And normal stuff, like, share, comment, and subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. I'm going to take just a moment to also plug an Amazon affiliate link down below. That's not to say you have to click it. That's not to say you have to buy anything, but if you are thinking of buying a toaster or something and you do use that link, it does help us a little bit by giving us a few pennies. But once again, don't feel you have to. I'd also like to thank HP Computers really briefly for loaning me an Omen X laptop. That's not a sponsored uh, plug or anything like that, but they did lend it to me for the purposes of my trip to the United States. And well, we're gonna be doing some reviews of a lot of their products, desktops and laptops when I get back to the UK. So they said, hey, you can borrow this particular uh, laptop in the meanwhile, just to kind of get a handle on things and figure it out and because it's got overclocking and all this other stuff. So it's kind of handy for me to tweak and play around with something. Plus as well, let's just be honest, I've been playing Shadow of the Tomb Raider. It's pretty good. With all that said, take care of yourselves. Bye for now. <laughs>